Didn't you see me down here? No. This is the Erie Canal. Did they teach you about that in school? No. Well, come on down. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Not a very big one, boy. Here, take that one off. We used to catch bigger fish than that when I was a young fella. Yes, sir. We caught some big fish here on the Erie Canal. You see those arches? Well, they're under the aqueduct. They had to carry the canal over the stream so the boats could pass. It was tricky construction. We used to stop the boats right here. It was a good place to change the mules. Yeah, they had to change them every once in a while. Bring out the extra ones. You mean they had other ones in the boat? Oh, sure. Carried lots of mules. You had to change them every 10 miles or so, right over there. Over on the wide water. You know that rock you just threw in the canal? Well, that was part of the aqueduct. Took months to build this thing. Let me tell you the real story of the Erie Canal. Kind of think about a canal in the 1780s. The Appalachian Mountains made it difficult for people to travel from the coast to the western territories. A waterway between the Hudson River and Lake Erie would make it easier to move to the west. And a successful canal would have to follow level ground as much as possible. Still, the canal would have to have locks, 83 of them, in fact. And they would be to raise or lower the boats from one level to another. And at Lockport, there'd have to be a series of locks to carry the boats over a ridge. The canal would eat an aqueduct, you see, wherever it crossed the river. And DeWitt Clinton put out this canal built. In 1809, he became canal commissioner, and digging finally began in 1817. Immigrants, many of them Irish, were hired straight from the docks in Manhattan to build Clinton's ditch. But in 1825, the canal was finished at last, DeWitt Clinton led a triumphal procession of boats all the way from Buffalo to New York City. And that trip took about seven days. He brought two kegs of water from Lake Erie and poured them into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, you see, there was an easy way for people and goods to get to the West. The cost of shipping freight dropped by 90%. Boats was pulled by mules. The mule driver was often called a hoggy. While one of the teams pulled, you see, another set of mules rode on the boat. Every six hours, the rest of the team took the place of the other mules that had been working. Canal Bank was a great place for picnics and watching the boats go by. But the people who lived along the canal got used to it and paid very little attention to the passing boats. You know, a trip from Albany to Buffalo took nine days. And to supply the boatmen during their long journey, stores were built along the canal. They had hay for the mules and they had food for the boatmen. Storekeeper was a jack of all trades. He often started as a lock keeper, and then he branched out. Goods to the west, and raw materials to the east. Flour and feed, salt, and lumber, fertilizer were shipped from the cities that grew up along the canal. As a boat entered the city, it might stop at a way lock where the captain had to pay a toll on the cargo he carried. In fact, so much cargo was carried, the entire Erie Canal paid for itself in 10 years' time. And then it became fashionable to travel by packet to see scenes like Profile Rock. These packets were pulled by horses instead of mules, 
and they often exceeded the speed limit of four miles an hour. The slower boats had to move aside for them. And a good many famous people like Hawthorne, Dickens, and Bryant, and Lafayette took this tour. Most to take a stagecoach from Albany to Schenectady, and then ride on a packet from Schenectady West. The packet could go about 80 miles a day, traveling a day and night. And the passengers ate and slept in the cabin. And if a low bridge were coming up, the passengers would have to get down on the top until the packet passed under the bridge. I've got a mule, her name is Sal. Fifteen years on the Erie Canal. She's a good old worker and a good old pal. Fifteen years on the Erie Canal. We've hauled some barges in our day, filled with lumber, coal, and hay. And we know every inch of the way from Albany to Buffalo. Most of the boats carried freight, and for their crew, they usually had two mule drivers, steersmen, and a captain. The captain and his family lived on the boat and served as a crew. And the canal was kept in repair by state scows. Had to be prepared for breaks in the wall of the canal and other accidents. A traveling museum for education and entertainment floated up and down the canal. called the Good News, carried missionaries from the rescue mission of Syracuse. The development of steam power brought the steamboats to the canal. Companies often hired a boat for an employee's outing. Wealthy people had boats built. And then launched them in the Erie. And many a romance started with a canoe, a gal, and the Erie Canal. With the coming of winter, the canal was closed for three to five months. And hundreds of people could go skating on the wide sections of the canal. construction began. And in many places, the railroad ran along the side of the canal. They took away the passenger traffic, and then the packet boats disappeared. But the canal carried more and more freight despite the competition of the railroads. Sometimes a person could stand on the bank and see an endless line of boats. The Erie Canal didn't vanish like other canals. It was widened and it was deepened, and its route was changed, and it became a part of the New York State Barge Canal System. After 1917, the old Erie Canal was abandoned. The mule-drawn boat allowed to rot, and the weeds and bushes grew over the locks, and the parts that still held water was filled with trash. Come on, let me show you around the canal. Okay.
Well, over there, they could change the mule. And over here, they could cross the creek on the aqueduct. You see over there? This wall could be repaired again, and these stones could be replaced. And we could take the trash out of the canal and take a boat ride. Well, clear up the trash along the side of the canal, and someday this whole area could be a park. I have to go now. Thanks for telling me about the canal. Remember, the canal is your heritage now.